here's this photo of uh, different uh, maps and pre-planning systems whenever they come out to do their demonstration. When you come out to the demonstration, you go ahead and use your maps, loans, reclaim, and verify that the thing is going down the storm drain. And a lot of information, well, the information that needs to be posted on the side is the name and your contact information within three inch lettering. Uh, a lot of individuals might not have it on the side and then pass the demonstration because they don't have a proper requirement on the side of the vehicle. You can either need it on both sides of either the trailer or on the door to the vehicle, your name and your company phone number. These are just photos of the bones and retrains that different individuals use. We don't want to specific on how elaborate your system is as long as it works. This is another photo of a fresh washer demonstration. Different individuals choose to do different things. Some just use the mat to move around it. A photo on the far left or your top right, they just have to put the mat down with the reclaim on top of the mat. This is this photo of some equipment. And in the pink circle is the actual decal that uh, someone was given for their permit. It so will have your permit number, the actual decal for that year, to the right will be a picture, the number of your vehicle. This uh, truck will be over here with you for one of the presentations. Uh, it's pretty neat if you drive it around. I think they tend to use it for parking garages mostly. I hear it's pretty expensive. And as it's clean, it picks up the water and everything at the same time. This is just another photo of another individual uh, pressure washing. His type of equipment is put out right at the same time and reclaimed it at the same time, so there's very little runoff. But he had his equipment and boom set up just in case for whatever else. And like I said, there was very little runoff with this type of equipment. This is a photo of an actual decal for the 2011 transport year. Um, the current number, like I said, is located on the left. This year's sticker is purple and it has 11 for year 2011 on there. In the event you are a generator or you choose, to, you choose to get a transporter and you do not see this purple sticker on their vehicle there, you do not have a current permit. And their truck number is listed here on the far right. Um, one of the requirements for transporters is your monthly report. Reports are due on the 15th of the month, regardless if you have any work or not. In the event you do forget, enforcement action is taken, you might receive a violation notice, you forget again, then you will receive a citation. Like I said, regardless if there's any activity, it's still when you do. Um, the complete report includes your report form, the cover sheet that has your company name, permit number, what month you're reporting for, how many manifests you're turning in. Uh, there's a $3.50 processing fee for all the manifests that you're submitting that were used. In the event you have any voided manifest, just write void across the manifest is still submitted in, but do not submit a payment for the voided manifest. You'll provide the actual copies of the transporter copy of the manifest. The manifest has several different parts to it, but we need the transporter copy for our particular report. And payment for the manifest, like I said, is $3.50 per manifest, and we accept checks and money orders only. This here is just an example of the Antron manifest that we recently started using. This is the transport copy, which is the very top copy, which is required in your monthly report. If you notice on the far left-hand side, there is a black barcode, which is used to be put in the machine to go ahead and uh, receive the data. This is just a pressure washer example of how to fill out your Antron manifest. In the event you're a pressure washer, you'll go ahead and bubble the type of waste removed, which is in the middle here at the top. Say with 300 gallons, you'll go in 300. Go ahead and write the information at the top. For your generator information, you'll go ahead and put your pressure washing company's name because you're considered the generator of that waste. You will go ahead and put the location of where you're cleaning and go ahead and get the signature, date, and time. The transport information will be the transport information as far as the city of Houston permit number. You'll go ahead and load that information in. You'll have your vehicle registration number. Those two items are found on the actual detail that's on the vehicle or trailer. You go ahead and put the amount of gallons removed. The transport information on the far right, you put your company name, address, driver's uh, signature, and everything. And at the bottom right hand corner is the disposal site information where you take your waste to go ahead and be disposed. You'll have to fill that information out and have them stamp it in that area. In the event you are, say, called grease trap waste, they'll have to fill out the generator information at the top. You'll have to put the TCQ number 
from their particular bridge track permit, they'll just bubble in the type of way. So if you're hauling bread or land freeze, so make sure you bubble in the correct information and go ahead and fill it out just the same as the pressure washer uh, The regular transporters, they're only required to hold on to their waste within four days. So without, make sure you go ahead and dispose of it immediately within those four days. But pressure washers are allowed to hold on to their waste till the end of the month. Um, illegal car washes. A uh, legal car wash, uh, there's a lot of obvious things because a lot of them do not have grit traps to bathe, and that's required by the UPP plumbing code. Um, we do not permit mobile car washes within the city of Houston. To go over the requirements, like I said, bays are required. These are two photos of bays that are found in car washes. They act as an access point and initial separation of solids before anything drains into the actual grit trap. The other interceptor requirements is the, the grid trap itself. It's a device used to separate solids and everything and clean out the water prior to the water entering into the sanitary sewer system. Uh, it's very important that you have these two things in the event you decide to set up a car wash on the side of the street. If there's HPD out or any environmental investigators out, they can go ahead and issue a citation because that's considered an illegal car wash because you do not have the proper plumbing requirement. These here are just photos of other illegal car washes that we've come across. These individuals just set up somewhere. There was any type of plumbing requirements at this location. Water was running down to the storm drain, which is a big no-no. Um, same thing with a lot of car dealerships. They're required to have the same uh, requirements as well as the brick tracks and bays. But this location, they just decided to go ahead and wash right there on the site without the proper requirements. And here's photos of the wastewater going down the side of the street and right into the storm drain. Um, when you come across these types of situations, there's zero tolerance for any MS4 violations. That's in our department, HPD, Public Works. There's no tolerance uh, approach with that. And in the event you are caught doing any of these uh, things, there's a range of a fine from $250 to $2,000 per violation. And that concludes my presentation. Are there any questions or anything? <laughs> you are allowed to go ahead and recycle the water, but you're still required to dispose of the waste water by the end of the month. So there is no report. And you have to, even though that you have a recycle process going on. I understand that you're still required to go ahead and dispose of your waste water at the end of the month. Any other questions?
by nature you don't. So whatever it is, for example, you work five days, you went several places, you can make one manifest for that, you don't, so you have them to take that way on that manifest, have them stamp it, and I'll give you a manifest for those several days. Um, we'll just have to contact the consultant if I can find out that information. All right, well, that concludes my presentation. Thank you for your time.